that existed. It's so beautiful. <laughs> We're back with Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins of Breitbart News. So <laughs> I was just talking about the scar. Um, <laughs> so tell us about your report on concealed carry permits. Essentially, basically, the surge in numbers of permit requests. Oh, sir, yeah, the well, biggest biggest uh, yearly surge in history of concealed carry was May six May twenty sixteen to May twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a massive surge. I, what I like about that is that it takes a little bit of Obama's administration, a little bit of Trump's administration, and to me, that's important because you have so many people that want to say, well, Trump's in, it's going to mess up this, it's going to mess up that. Yeah. And it, and, and of course, having Trump does take away fear as a motivator. That's a fact mm -hmm. as far as spying goes. But the concealed carry shows that the gun community is still growing. They're still thriving under Trump. Yeah. And what's important is this is driven in large part by women and minorities. And I love, I love that, you know, uh, I like the same way I love referencing how uh, Stand Your Ground helps minorities, blacks in particular. I love talking about how concealed carry is being embraced by minorities because for you and I have talked about it before, and it's probably for reasons I don't understand, but there was just the longest time that it seemed like black citizens, when they looked at guns, they thought about, they equated owning a gun with crime, or I don't know. I've, yeah. I've read so many things they've said, but they've begun I mean, I, to understand. No, I mean, you're talking to someone. This I, right I did. Is my right too. Yeah, I was the same important. way. Yeah, I was absolutely the same way. That's that's what I equated it to. Um, I, I I never. I remember the first time I saw. Um, I had a gun in one of my dorm rooms. Um, one of my friend, one of my roommates' friends, brought a gun in there, and you know, immediately my mind goes, "Oh no, people are going to think we're criminals. We're we were this and we're that." That's that yeah. was my mentality as well. So that is absolutely. Right. Yeah, you're, you're spot on with respect to that. But but. I, I just love, and I love with the women, you know, you've got grandmas. I've written on some grandmas in Ohio who they said they didn't want to take their grandkids to the park without their gun because they realized, and you'd think, wow, you mean you're 65 or 70 and you just thought of that? And I'm yeah. not being smart, like, yeah, but yeah. it's weird. There's been a change in our mentality, and I've said it since Sandy Hook. I think Sandy Hook did it because the Democrats so overreached for gun control, but there was a rebirth a rebirth of our understanding of self-defense. And these grandmas say, you know what? I don't want to be in the park because I can't defend these kids with my hands. I can't fight it. I'm too weak now. Yeah. I've got to have the gun. I love seeing that because that means that community is expanding. And it, it kills the left, and you know it, the left's favorite go-to argument. Same people are buying all the guns. guns. They're just buying more guns. Yeah. Well, it's not happening. It, concealed carry can't be expanded for women and minorities and the same people buying the gun. So <laughs> it insults me for you to say that, yeah. you know, no, not absolutely. you, but for the left. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things, too, is it's, it's reality. We're, it's, it's people who, are, who are, are starting to accept reality. Um, when, you, when you see things like Sandy Hook happen, like our schools are supposed to always be sanctuaries. You know, okay, colleges, people can kind of dismiss it. You know, high school, uh, people, yeah, it's a little bit harder, but you can kind of dismiss it. When it happens at an elementary school, you start to realize, then the bells go up. It's like, wow, like, I am really legitimately vulnerable. Not, not to the point of paranoia, but just understanding that, no, I, I can't just live in this mental cocoon space where I think that I live in a proverbial uh, fantasy land where everything, everything's fine, I'm protected, the government has me, um, you know, nothing can hurt me or harm me here. When you're confronted with that reality, it, two people, I mean, you, you almost have no choice but to accept it, especially when it's as right. brutal and as fierce as something like Sandy Hook. And I, and I think right. what it does, and by and large, is it tells people, okay, well, um, these things happen, and I don't know when it can happen. I just want to be in the best position to do something about it when it does. It's that right. simple. Um, and, and yeah, and, uh, and the other side tries to complicate it and throw in politics, race, all of these things to muddy it up and muck it up um, and to dissuade people from from coming to that realization that reality is always going to be reality, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. It's going to remain reality and it will and it can affect you. Um, and so that so as you said before, that's it's a beautiful thing when I see it as well, um, because what that tells me is not only it's not a you know, they try to cloak it and paint it as this, you know, old paranoid gets you know paranoid delusions of grandeur when in reality what it tells me is it's it's people who other people see as victims empowering themselves that's it and i'd like i love the way you put that empowering mm -hmm. themselves that's exactly right you know i wrote a story today on a lady in mississippi and a quote this is a direct quote from her i was always anti-gun that was her quote 
she said, until she looked out the window and she was looking eye to eye with a home intruder, <laughs> her home invader. But she heard the dude coming through the house and she she must have a porch. He made yeah. it into the porch. She does the blinds like this to see where he is. He's looking through the same slit oh, when wow. she does that. She takes off running out the back of the house, calls 911. They show up. He's able to steal some things and flee before they yeah. get there. But what does she do now? She says her whole life anti-gun, wouldn't have a gun in the house. Now she has a gun. She's in a firearms training course, and she's going to get her concealed carry permit. And she's taking her 15-year-old daughter with her because she said, should this happen to my daughter, I want her to be able to defend herself. Yeah. And see, what we, what we that's what you're talking about. This woman is now empowered, no longer a victim, yep. refuses to be a victim. She's not a threat to anybody except the person who wants to break into her home. Absolutely. She's a major threat to that person. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. how it should be. Absolutely. Now, speaking of which, you've also wrote about California teachers and how they may be losing the right to defend themselves, yeah, which doesn't bad, surprise bad me considering it's in California. California. Jesus. But what happened here is they, the California, a few years ago, they banned uh, carry on K-12 through school campuses. But what they did is they threw in the token benevolence. They said, well, if your administrator lets you carry and you have a concealed carry, you can carry. They didn't expect anyone to do it. Five schools out of about a thousand districts, five school districts said our teachers can carry. And it's got these Democrats so worked up that now they're going to go through, rework that bill and remove the exemption that allowed administrators to give permission. And so I'm framing this. Every piece I write on it, I'm framing the same way. We're just going to be honest. What they're doing is saying teachers can't shoot back when under attack. Yep. And I think that's how people need to hear this. Because what they're saying to those teachers, you brought up Sandy Hook a while ago. They're saying to those teachers, we want you in that same posture if it happens in your school. And people say, well, that's conjuncture. Con you know, you can't. No, that's what they're doing. They're taking yeah. the guns away from the teachers. And there hasn't been one, inc one incident, not accidental or otherwise, not one incident from armed teachers in California. So there's no justification for this. It's just it's just their worldview. They want to yeah. press it on these teachers. And they continue to do that with such vigilance. And it it terrifies me. And is an, it, 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 I don't. It, people are really that stupid. I, yeah. like, it, it, it's, it's, it's either that or, or the agenda has gone above and beyond just being an agenda now. It, it's taken on something that's incredibly even more politically politically perverted um right. I, I don't really know what it is and it and it it, it definitely it seems to just come to life in california in a way that i just don't i can't even come up with the words to really describe it because it just it's it's so all over the place but yet so focused and it's insatiable hatred and desire to get rid of the second amendment that yeah. I, 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 it just kind of boggles my mind because they need the same people who are like, we just want to keep guns out of the hands of the, of, 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 of the bad people who are not supposed to have them. But here we are talking about teachers. Right. I, I'm, I'm right. confused. See, like, oh. if, if, if you remember Sandy Hook, I'm just going to say this, uh, you know, the kids, what, what, how horrendous. I'm not overlooking them. I'm just making a point. The principal charged that gunman. Remember, she yeah. gave her life. She was, she was hoping she could tackle him before he did what he did. Yeah. And, of course, he just shot her and killed her. Now, how can that be more desirable Damn. to a politician than she reaches into her purse and pulls out a thirty eight and they take care of him and the kids are safe? How? Why does she have to be in a position of sacrificing her life? That's the, that's the fundamental question. Why will she have to do that? When she has a God-given right to have a gun with her for self-defense, why why are they going to pervert that? It makes no sense to me. Yeah, and and in I'll, I'll end with this point, and it's incredibly pragmatic. I mean, it if we really want to get down into the meat and bones of a situation like that, a teacher charging a gunman and then being shot and stopped um, is exceedingly less effective than a teacher with a firearm shooting a gunman and still being shot because the gunman right. then is also still shot. So now that slows the gunman down considerably. So then now he right. can't continue on forward as efficiently committing his reign of terror. Um, right. and that's kind of pretty much where I'm going to leave it at this point. But, um, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, always love having you on the show. It's always a pleasure.
And um, think, you, you stay dry out there, man. And um, if uh, you know, if you see Noah, Noah out there, start rounding up people. Give me a call. If I uh, if I see <laughs> Noah, I'll holler. <laughs> <All> <laughs> right. Yeah, right now I'm looking for two dogs, two sheep, and a couple of goats. <laughs> so I'm gonna go get that. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right, but really appreciate it, man. You definitely have a good one. All right, you too. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today on CN Live. I'm Coleon Noir, and I'm out.